You are now listening to For All Nerds Show, a podcast about geek and pop culture from the perspective of people of color. For All Nerds Show is a member of the Loudspeakers Network, where we always say rest in peace to our founder, Combat Jack. For All Nerds is hosted by Tatiana King and DJ Benjamin. For All Nerds Show is powered by our listeners. Everything we do from our podcasts, live events, our website are all independently funded. Please continue to support us through our Patreon page at patreon.com slash for all nerds. Welcome to the For All Nerds Show. And welcome, Internet, to another episode of For All Nerds. The podcast where we talk about geek and pop culture from the perspective of people of color. And it is us in costume. Happy Halloween. First of all, it's me, your resident captain of the spaceship tonight, Tatiana King, a.k.a. Her sister was a witch, a.k.a. Doc Aki, a.k.a. Tesseract Thompson, the Book of Ashanti, the coldest winter soldier ever, Luanda Vision, Wicked Witch of the West View, Doctor Doing Something Strange for some change, and the Ting of the North. And as always, listen, she ate. She is eating me all the way up when it comes to this Halloween fit. Let me introduce y'all to ma'am, Miss Ma'am, Portia Patterson, a.k.a. Judy Judy. Funny. Hello, everyone. It is Portia Patterson, a.k.a. Judy Funny, for which drama is life and art is everything. A.k.a. Shade Sorcerer Supreme. A.K.A. Captain Planned It. A.K.A. Portia the grown Witch. A.K.A. Rayquanda Maxim Off. A.K.A. Stay with the Bagatha Harkness. I'm crying. Please, please, Lord. Why are you so good at this? Bro. When Portia jumped on this podcast, I am dead ass crying. When Portia jumped on this podcast and she came on with the the smile, serious bitch, you are Judy funny. I can't. Can y'all put? Can we do a side by side picture right the fuck now? Like, ain't no way. Y- the millennials, y'all understand when it comes to Doug. This is she won. She won. She won. She won. Okay, I'm sorry. Let me get my composure. Um, because we are here to do a job. <laughs> I'm sorry. You just compose yourself. We must get into character. Okay. Okay, yes. And I command the winds of the East. Okay, I I can't. I don't have it right now. But what I do have is our review of the last two episodes of Agatha All Along, episodes eight and nine. This is the finale of maybe the season finale, not so much series finale. We don't know. I don't know. The way they did it, they did it like they're ready for their journey to continue on. They're going to go keep going down the yellow brick road. I don't know. Um, Portia, I can't with the wig, the bob. The bob. <laughs> I'm sorry. But yes, y'all, we are here to talk, review, recap, give our reactions to the last two episodes of this series season. Before we get into like all the deep details, just like, are you... In the words of Ayana on TikTok, are you satisfied? I was thoroughly entertained. The drama was peak. Are you going to and... hear this voice the whole time? <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> I can't take you seriously. <laughs> um, yes, I really enjoyed it. Okay. Um, I have enjoyed the whole journey. And I enjoyed that. I enjoy when the end of a journey is not uh-huh. really the end. Like verse, mm. like the cycle continues. Okay. Um, I feel like it was it, like very fitting that so much of the tell, and we'll get into more points, but um, some of the points towards the end of episode eight were a reminder of like how much uh, the journey of the witch's road was related to like Wizard of Oz and the like Yellow Brick Road and all that stuff Mm. and um, how fitting is it for William to return home look around and realize was it all from my head in a very Dorothy Gale kind of way Mm. okay Um, I will say that I was satisfied I I liked how 
again, this, I mean, y'all going to argue with me all day on this. This, this might've been the best Disney plus show, like period on the history of Disney plus. And I know that might be a tall order for a lot of people, but the reason why is because this has been consistent. This has been a journey that I actually enjoyed from the very beginning. I didn't, like, you know how they say, oh, you need like two, three episodes to get into it. No, bitch. Like the first 30 minutes I was in and I was like, oh, okay, I get where y'all going. I smell what y'all cooking. And it kept being more and more engaging and it was damn good writing from Jump Street. And there is not, I okay, maybe one or two shows, like... There's not too many shows or maybe an episode or two of What If. Are you talking about, okay, here's the thing. Let's talk about Disney Plus, like. Disney Plus, sh- Disney Plus originals. TV shows. Originals. Yeah. Specifically. I'm not talking yeah. about like the MCU and the entirety of the MCU and films. No. Mm-hmm. The TV shows. Yeah. I, I think this might have won. And, and, and again, it's, it's because of the level of consistency, the level of expertise, the, the power this has, the communication this has, the longevity this has. Okay, like it's it's mother. And I just they not only like wrapped it up and gave you a fulfilling, okay, this is what's happening, it gave you more context behind like the one of the biggest mysteries of the show, which was what happened to Nicholas Scratch, what happened to Agatha's son. And to see that whole backstory and it all fold in on itself, like it's Agatha all along, I, I, I liken it to like an origami, like something that you you, know, you fold it over onto itself and you create something beautiful, but there's always pieces within it that touch and matter and convert converge onto another to still like to build something bigger. Like I, I, I just, I was, I was very happy, very pleased with the way it ended. And I, one big thing I wanted to say after watching episode eight, I told y'all so. I told y'all, I told y'all, I told y'all. How many times did I say this shit was a figment of Billy's mind, imagination, congratulations, okay? I told y'all. What the fuck did I say the last two, three episodes? I said, the road is a manifestation of everything in his room. Run that shit back if y'all didn't hear me say that, but I said it over and over and over again. There was literally, and then, oh, okay. I'm about to get mad, but before I get mad, I'm just getting mad because I'm like, I told y'all. But before I get mad, um, what was the biggest takeaway for you? Out at the end of these two episodes, maybe not the whole season. Where was it? I'm like, whew. <laughs> Let me back up. Just, oh. just, uh, no. Um, I think that the the show really sets you up with the premise, right? Like. It's Agatha all along. Mm. Um, and you know what I meant to do and I did not do and I will be doing for a second um, in this discussion is looking at all the different um, title fakes they gave us. Mm. Like Agatha in what, what, whatever, uh, the Coven of Harkness. And all, like I want to go back through that because I know those are like of like series kind of or like season um, clues and like takeaways that probably will be like thoughtful. But mm. when I think about like the show kind of set us up for Agatha all along. And so we know that going in, um, whatever clues they drop about Agatha's backstory are going to be integral to what her journey is in the series. And so getting to these final two episodes and like having heard her um, and so many people like have so many like weird, like non, like very vague, um, comments about what happened to her and her son, even though we had never heard of her son before. Like, right. And then for us to get to um, Rio being like, why are you letting them go with the falsehoods around Nick? Mm. And then being like, I'm understanding a bit more that like Rio's heart, like as death, Mm-hmm. Like it's like a like in episode nine we get much more of that, but in episode eight, Rio's heart as death as she says that, right? It makes it really interesting because you're like, what, why, what is her buy into Agatha's story about Nick? 
And why does she care right. about that besides just caring for Agatha? And then getting to episode nine and actually seeing how it all played out. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's deep. It, and it's, it's so deep how that shit played out. I mean, you know, it's funny, Portia, that you mentioned that just... At the end of the day, you're not still not supposed to like Agatha. No. And I think they make that very apparent with these last two episodes. Like, as much as we say, you know, I mean, as a character, as someone I'm, like, watching to, like, be entertained by, yes, I appreciate her, right? But, like, I don't like Agatha. Like, that's not my friend. Agatha's not, Agatha Harkness is not your friend. She's She's not your comrade. No. Right. She is very much a covenless witch, as they express. And... It's in her nature, and yes, she may have these these bursts of 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 compassion, or but it's always tied back to. It's never like it's never in my head like true empathy. It's like everything ties back to what she went through, right? Like, and I guess maybe that's just the definition of it. But I feel like there's like she doesn't just have empathy for sake of having it, right? It's like. Well, I know what that feels like, or I went through that, so now I feel for you. Versus if if she never been through none of that, or it didn't feel the type of way, or didn't have any connection with you, she'd be like, "You're luck, you you know, tough shit. That's on you." I just feel like it's just interesting with Agatha. Like when I was watching her go through her shit with her son, I was just like, I felt like that old lady in the meme. I was like, should I feel sorry for the bitch? Because I don't. Like <laughs> I kind of did it. Like, and maybe that's 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 harsh of me, but. And someone's like, oh, yeah, you've been through it. But I'm like, well, bitch, why are you, why are you going through this? Like, even your son is questioning your motives and your, and your actions. And you're kind of just doing what the fuck you want to do. I can't, let me, let me sound, I, again, I get it. On, on the same thread, but possibly mean, but I don't care because, you know, she deserves what she gets. Uh, she gets what she deserves. Agatha, I thought it was very well-timed. Mm. For Rio to take Nick, Nikki right on the same day that he rebuted Agatha and her taking people's powers. Right. He was like, I'm going to sing and uh, dance and like make the hubba blue and then, you know, get the draw in the victims that you like to take. But then as soon as like he could have snapped in and taken advantage, like his mom would have wanted him to, he was like, nah. Mm-hmm. actually no and so i think that's the like the get the main takeaway is that at the end of the day it's like agatha's i been on this like journey is like it's me all along very narcissistic but when we get to the um like towards the end of episode nine you hear that her true fear is to face her son knowing how much she making it all about her all along mm-hmm. is something that she fears having to seeing his him. judgment on yes. whatever she does see him again. Yes, yes. I want to definitely get into Rio because there's so much there. Um, First of all, apparently her and Agatha have been fucking for like a century. <laughs> I just like, I knew they had history, but my God, they said 1760? I was, I wrote my notes like, now here's the thing. Death can come in many forms. Is that baby Death's baby? I know. I just thought that was her. I thought that was all the way the real. We know that's still the same lady. It's Death. You can it, maintain but, okay, that. Okay, Death can take many forms. So in order for Agatha to get pregnant, did Rio take on a different form? In order, is that Death's baby? Okay, wait. I okay. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I, I I don't want that to be the case simply because like none of this makes sense, right? In the word of, in the world of witchery, none of this makes sense. But I didn't want that to be the case. I thought about it. I didn't want that to be the case because I was just like the way Agatha was just like it wasn't like they were having the baby together. It wasn't like well, then again, she's death. But I was like, it was like Rio was happy to see her, you know, have the baby. It was just like. I don't know. I, I just, I don't, does that automatically mean like death, death sires a child and then wants the child like immediately? Like, I don't, I don't know. I just don't want that just to be so flat like that. And then like the way Agatha was talking, it was like, you know, because she said, 
And that's part of the reason why the boy's name is Scratch. It's very, it's very Game of Thrones, right? Like when mm-hmm. it's a bastard child. Think about that. It's a bastard child that they just take on the last name, whatever region they're in, right? Jon Snow, so-and-so, San, whatever. This one, Nicholas Scratch, she said, I made you from scratch, which gives to me that she did it the old-fashioned way and got pregnant the old-fashioned way. But to your point, that still could have been death in a form where you did it the old-fashioned way. I don't know. I'm hoping not. Because that would be... I mean, it's already fucked up. Their relationship is so fucked up. That would be incredibly even more to the 10th power fucked up. I really don't want that, Borch. I don't like that idea. <laughs> and like, I don't like that just because I don't like it. <laughs> no, but I'm like, think about it from the perspective of, like, death has been trying to get Agatha back home. Perhaps that is... That was been their oh son's only wish is to have Agatha back. And Agatha's like, I'm not ready. I'm not ready. I'm not ready. I'm not ready. And so any every chance she gets to deny the like her own death is not from a place of like, oh, I just want to be an immortal. It's mm-hmm. literally from a place of I'm scared to face what happens when I take on death. Mm. Mm. I mean, I guess that's the obvious answer. There's, there's nobody else around. They're not going to reveal a random nigga. Right. At the last Especially minute. after establishing this romance with death. Like, what else God. is the answer? Okay. Well, it. <sighs> I guess so. Akatha was like, my love. Why are you here? It, it was it was for a second, for a hot second. This is, this is just stuff I want to believe. For a hot mm-hmm. second, it was giving Akatha had a little tryst somewhere. And it was, was like, oh, my love, death is back. Guess what? Yeah, I'm pregnant, but can you just leave me alone for a second? That's what I was hoping, but I know that's naive. For a second there, whenever Agatha was on the road, like whenever she had had the baby and she was feeding the baby and she'd had, she fed the baby right after she took the power from a witch. I'm like, are we about to learn that Agatha only takes power, initially only took powers because it was like, she's like a succubus and her son was like an incub- uh, incubi, incubi and yeah. like, that was how, like, the baby's name. Because she was like, you like that, huh? And then I was like, hmm. And then whenever um, they were on the road, I'm like, is she just, like, t- is this a thing? It started because she was trying to feed the both of them. Because he was saying, I'm hungry. And she's like, oh, she's trying to feed both of them. But then I, he was like, nah, we don't need this, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, so he don't, and he actually wanted food and he didn't show any power set. So I was yeah. like, maybe. Well, that's another reason why I was like, well, maybe he a regular degular because he's a regular, he he's just regular. wanted food. And that's why another reason why I was like, well, maybe death ain't got nothing to do with it because maybe no, she laid I down with like, a regular degular. Here's the, I was so, here. my thinking was, okay, so when I, when I saw him not have a manifestation power and he only ate regular food, I was like, okay, so it's not the incubi theory, incubus theory, but. If he, like, Death said that, like, Agatha had already received the most, like, special treatment than anybody had ever gotten. Mm, She did say that. And I feel like perhaps, like, the magic of Nikki was him being alive. Because he wasn't supposed to be. Because he wasn't supposed to be alive. Okay. That, it's making sense. I don't want it to make sense, but it's making sense. It's such a, cause it's such a tragic thing. Like, first of all, for, for those that don't know, or those who read the comics or want to know like the tie in, like death is one of the, for obvious reasons, but for this reason, death is one of the most toxic characters. And I didn't jump into that the last episode, but what that we reviewed, but death's relationship are the most toxic relationships you can probably read in the MC, uh, excuse me, the, the, the Marvel comic universe, especially because in the comics anyway, her relationship is primarily with Th- Th- Thanos. And yeah, there's other stuff that's going on, but the, a lot of the stories you see is about Thanos and how Thanos is always trying to impress death. And like, even the whole thing with the Infinity Gauntlet, that was partially just, just to impress the bitch and try to win her hand and love. And like, she's always like, it's always like dangling the carrot, like, oh, you want my love, you want to be with me, but you got to do this fuck shit first, right? That was that has been her relationship with Thanos, and and basically egging him on to, to just commit atrocities and genocide and shit like that. Um, and that's repeated with with other people who have like love interests with with death. And again, like I said, for obvious reasons, it's fucked up, but it's also just like it's extremely toxic. So it's interesting how this this version that is you know, has a relationship with Agatha is extremely toxic. And also Agatha herself being toxic, it's kind of like one of the worst matches, the worst, best matches you can ever see. 
in comic book history, right? Um, plus magic and, and plus all this other shit. <laughs> as a purveyor of drama, I just want to say that everyone loves a toxic romance. Like, it really gets the people going, invested in inside. So I feel like, especially if we're getting more seasons, even mm. if it's one more season of the show, there's no way they're going to get rid of that being, like, a through line. Like, death and... Rio, Death, and Agatha. Oh, they got to keep Aubrey. Well, first of all, Aubrey Plaza is great. But they, they like got Aubrey to Plaza's keep... Aubrey going to show up somewhere else. Like, somewhere else in the MCU as Death. Like, that's not the only... She has We're to. not only going to see her in this property as Death. She's she has too to. too big of a player for her yeah. as not to see her elsewhere. Death is too... Like, for them to, to your point, for them to introduce such a huge... And a lot of people don't realize it, but for them to introduce such a big character within now the, the live-action MCU, and also just the understanding of death as an entity. Like, forget comic book history. Death as an entity. You're talking about death and life. Like, that. that's some powerful shit. So, yeah, it's kind of like, it will be a waste if you threw that character to the side and didn't revisit. And also, it's such a charismatic, Aubrey's, Aubrey's version of death anyway, it's such a charismatic character. Um, and one that, similarly to Agatha, is, it's very confusing in that you enjoy being entertained by them, but you're also like, I do not like this person. Um, so I, to your point, I, I really do hope that they continue somewhere with that. And obviously in, in Agatha along, I think hopefully they'll get a season two, but just somewhere else in the MCU would be nice. I really liked last week when you, when you had your whole theory about the green magic and the trickster and then the potential tie in the Logan. Like I loved all of that. And, and, you know, the door is wide open for, for any of that. Um, yes, we understand the character is just simply death, but I mentioned Thanos too, right? Death is not simple. Right. Death is not simple. I also mentioned Thanos, you know, the, the history of who death is. You know who, who's connected to Thanos and we've been down this road already. So it's not that big of a leap to get to Loki. I'm just, I'm just saying. Um, this thing with Rio, though. This thing that she has with Agatha, this relationship, this deathly relationship that she has, the fact that she's constantly trying to kill the bitch. Um, so Agatha has been a ghost for like 10 minutes and she's already learned to be corporeal and actually pick up things in real life. Remember, she couldn't, at first she couldn't touch Billy and she picked up stuff. And I mentioned this because I'm just like, how long is she going to be dead? Like, is she actually, is she going to find some way out of ghosthood and come back? Like... Like, and this is just the nature of comics. Nothing stays the same anyway. And, and you know, these are comic book characters, yes, in live action. But no, nonetheless, you're talking about witches and magic and death and all this demonization. So she can't be, she, she's not dead for real. At least not forever. I don't know. Here, because, like, Agatha in the comic books is an old lady, right? She's an old-ass lady. And and I, I, I peeped that, that they... They fast over her little character to right, to, right to where she is. They keep mentioning, because like the ballad has made, made in Mother Chrome, but so does her brooch. And I don't think we've ever technically, like technically we have seen Agatha as a maiden. Like we when have, she was with the baby. Coven. When she was when with she's the, in her coven, when, she, when her mother was maiden. tying her up at the stake. Uh, yeah, because yeah, maiden yeah. is like... Young girl. But usually it's virginal. And that's the thing. It's like, I don't know. I, I quibble with the idea of us actually having seen Agatha's Maiden. And maybe we'll get that in another season. Because Agatha uh, on a stake is not virginal. So I don't think we've actually <laughs> but seen. But that was before she had. But that was before she had Nick. It was. But technically, I don't know that technicality. Like for Maiden. I don't know. Anyways. um, Mother, we definitely have seen. With our whole time we've known Agatha. She's been mother. Mm. And then Chrome we got at the end as her as a ghost. Right. So I feel like the more like revelations we'll get about Agatha will be some a bits from her past back to the forward. And I think it's interesting that her mother shows up as a powerful wraith. And Agatha says she calculated, made some calculated measures for her to become a ghost. So I'm like, something about her seeing her mother as a wraith slash ghost. And her being like, something about this feels like. And I'm like, is she going to be on a quest at some point to reckon with her mother in that? Form? It would it would be 
interesting. I mean, you have motive behind it. And also her mom possessed her for like a hot second. So I would assume something, she learned something out of that. One thing we know about Agatha, as she says, she a quick study. She be picking shit up fast. She's, you know, one of them little genius ones. So that's that, that's tracking to me, what you're saying. That's tracking. Um, Can we talk about, and then episode nine was pretty brilliant. This whole thing about the witch's road was, first of all, it was a fucking nursery rhyme that her son made up. That but was then- was- Listen, that was the thing. but listen, that and I'm gonna get to you. Mm-hmm. I know what you're about to say. That was then bastardized and turned into the fucking scam of the century. But then what you're about to say, which is, but was it really? <laughs> go ahead, go ahead, Portia. Because when the woman walks up to him in the pub, she says, That's an interesting tune. Where did you get that from? So it feels like it was a ballad that was passed down from the witches, like from the coven that Agatha belonged to. Like the witches always knew, like it's been around for a pre Nikki Mm -hmm. when she was probably humming to Nikki and stuff. She changed up the words to not give Nikki the idea that they needed to be around other witches, like coven or whatever, like to not give him like that thought. So she just changed up the words for to make it about them and not about Mm -hmm. the witches road. Um, cause I feel like the way that the woman recognized it feels like it's like, cause I was, that was what I was sitting with. I was like, did he, is this the first time this is ever performed to an audience? And this is like, this is why the lore exists. Cause someone wrote it down and then took it with them and then like, or remembered it and mm-hmm. then it wrote it down and then became a thing. But mm-hmm. that witch in the pub who went up to him and asked him if he would like, like something to eat. It's like, that is an interesting tune. Where did you yeah. hear that from? But is it, she just said it's interesting because it's interesting, not because she recognized it. I think it's because she, rec- I think she came hmm. up, she came up to him as a witch, knowing, being like, are you a witch's child? What's, where did you get that from? Okay, maybe I can see that. I, I like that approach. I also, I also like the approach that like, it was dead ass just something he was just coming up with and they were singing it. I mean, nothing with Agatha is ever innocent, but in a way you could say it was an innocent thing that a mother and child was making up because like dead ass through that little montage of them singing a song, they were just adding random, quote, random. See, Judy Funny is not letting this stand about. She's like, nothing is random. Everything is planned. It just felt like, you know, they were just doing this cutesy mother son thing where it's just like, oh, we're just singing about our journey, journey through the woods and how I eat the other witches, right? Like, it's our journey together as a family, as a two-people family. And and it, it it was giving innocent until it wasn't, which I liked. The reason why I like that approach is because then it's very fitting about how then, you know, like you said, just with, and, and also maybe to your point, it's just how things get changed over the years, right? Like when we're talking about myths, and folklore and things like that. Like when it's passed down over the ages, certain parts change. The origin gets blurred in history. The truth of the matter, like a lot of people don't know certain nursery rhymes are are about death. And, you know, like they just, it gets wrapped up and, and changed so much that you don't realize the true origins of it. So that, like, that's the folklore, like the, the, the witch's ballad, the, the witch's road ballad, like that's folklore in and of itself, right? Like, how did it really start? And was it truly just something innocent between a mother and a child? And then did it become something else? And and also at the end of the day, for me, it fit the characterization of Agatha, taking something that could be potentially pure and bastardizing it, making it into a weapon, making it into something that wasn't even fucking real to begin with. And just a ploy that she used to capture and kill other witches. Yeah. I, that's the other reason why I think it, Like, that's even more evidence to me. That's why that song was, she she took a song that was probably nursery rhyme to her growing up Mm. and then changed it up with her son who she didn't want him to think about. Because, you know, in the song, there's like building a coven of witches and journeying along with them, going on, like being together with them. She didn't want him to think that they were supposed to do that. Um, so like he wanted, she wanted him to think, look at their life as being normal. So she made it about them instead of it being about the original thing. Yeah. The fact that as soon as she lays her son to rest, a woman comes up singing that song means that song had been proliferated way before her son ever her son ever sung it in a pub. 
Like that's it's a possibility. Been, that's possibility. It's, a, it's it's just that I can't shake the feeling that it was also something that they did just make up. Like they were the progenitors of it because when he first started, like forget the melody, but when he first started putting words to it, he was like, "I walk down the windy road." Like he was just literally saying shit. He's he's a six year old boy, however how old he was. I'm walking down the windy road, and she was like, "You walk down the windy road by yourself?" And he's like, "No." It became a we thing. It became a my mom and me type thing. So that's why I was like, I can't shake that. Maybe there was some semblance of innocence there. Yeah. I'm, I feel like with with him, that's what she was doing. But I feel mm. like she took where he started and was like, let me give you a, one. I think she, you know, when you're a kid and you may not know the origin of something, you just mm. like have it in your brain. Yeah. So he probably was just like he had like the nursery rhyme that he probably heard from his mom before when he was younger, the melody, the humming, some of it. And probably was just like, I'm going to use it when I'm talking about what I'm doing. I'm right. walking down a windy right. road. And then she was like, how much does he actually remember of this? Because she probably hadn't spoken to him about it in a while. And then slowly they evolved it into him getting, uh, again, changing up the lyrics so that it was about them and not about the original. Right. But I also want to talk about Talking of like mothers and songs, we started off like episode eight with Alice. And I was Mm -hmm. like, wait a minute. For a second, I was like, Mm -hmm. are we getting that true death? Not right. I was like, please, not the true death. She's back. No, girl, it was a fake out. She's gone. She's she's out of here. And I was like, but I did appreciate um, that actress getting a chance to be back. And I feel like the way that um, Billy is like, dealing with the consequences of him being the origin point or whatever for the way that the witch's road unravels um i think we're probably going to see her in lilia again next season would be nice i mean he has oh and and i don't know if you're gonna see mrs hart what about or, or sharon oh, i hope i hope so um i he didn't forget <laughs> mrs hart as much as agatha like i love agatha was like who <laughs> Oh, the garden lady girl. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, okay. I, I since you mentioned Alice, like I definitely wanted to tap on the fact that when we talked about that, the song again being something between a mother and a child, Lorna's version, Lorna Wu's version of it actually being a protection spell for her daughter to keep her alive despite the curse and all this other stuff. Like, that's why I'm just like, damn, you know, there's and you're right, there's like so many different applications for the song and how it's been used and for what purpose, right? Again, I just thought that was the most coldest thing that Agatha ended up using a fucking nursery rhyme, essentially. to Like, like dead ass, she was the, the witch that, what, Hansel and Gretel type shit, right? The witch that just draws people to you on the false pretenses and then finishes you up, right? Like, for her to but she use was, that but it's promise even like- of the road... But it's not even like it's out, outside of her modus operandi because no, she not. was doing the same thing with like drawing in people with the innocence of her son yeah, in order to suck out their powers. So yeah. she was just like, well, I don't got him anymore. So I guess I got to evolve into- She has to evolve. And, and and when I say cold, I don't mean like mean. I mean like, yes, that's it within her wheelhouse. I mean, that was just like, that's wild. That's like some, that's some, that's some wild type shit. Like- for her to be to to do that, like, and that's why I went back to me, like, I don't really like her because the depths of which, like, she goes through whatever the heartache she goes through, or whatever happens to her, then it's just like, okay, now the world is gonna suffer, yeah. <laughs> and, and it's, it's just like, damn, and in that way, and and also her son questioning him constantly, questioning her rather about mom, do you have to kill the witches? Blah, blah, blah. And she was like, and he and he said, why do you do it? She said, I need to survive. I still am not, I still didn't feel her when she was just like, I need to survive. Do you have to do that to survive? There's no other way. She was like, well, if they knew they would kill, you know, they, if we try to be with them, they would kill us. I'm like, how you know that? Have, have you even tried to just be with, like, find some coven, try to find friendship? Like, I don't even know if she tried. Like, she found betrayal with her mom. Okay, but what about everybody else? And And, and maybe that was the big enough scar, but... It just seemed to me like that's not a real reason. And it's just like her saying, oh, I need to survive. I don't believe you. No. I also think that um, I also think it was kind of 
like interesting that Rio, whenever she claims Alice, is like, well, you're a protection witch. You died protecting. Um, as if like whatever witch kind of witch you are, um, not only is that your mission, but it also is like your possible spells your end. And like think about Lily being the different nation witch, and then her end being her being able to manipulate the cards to bring down the tower and bring the end. Mm. Um and I wonder about like we never really heard a term for what kind of witch Agatha is. And so they call her a succubus, or we read that it says succubus, right? Where do we but hear like, that? What it, but like, this is what should, everyone else has a something witch. What kind mm. of witch is Agatha, right? And so you said it earlier, her and her relationship with Rio is toxic. It kind of like she's a toxic witch, and how did she go out toxically? Like, and so, like, it's very much like every component of her making a step moving forward is going to be the toxic way to do so um i was looking at the titles that were the previous titles so house of harkness coven of chaos darkness diaries and then the lying witch and a great wardrobe Mm -hmm. and she's she is she definitely was a lying witch with a decent wardrobe um every every the whole cast like got really fun wardrobe changes Mm -hmm. but for me thinking about if it were like going to be a dark hole diaries and maybe they would spend more time on like the grimoire component and then billy ends up with the end going to his little grimoire and using that to chant them a new way into the road um i'm intrigued i think the like so much of the story is about agatha as like the title says but we like we saw in episode like six a good chunk of this story is also about uh, Billy. And yes. her talking about the ways that when you mentioned the, like innocence, um, her like affinity for Billy comes from the place of where she holds in her heart for the innocence Nicholas. that reveals towards her that reminds her of Nikki. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I appreciated that she owned that like before you and I was like, I hope people are not walking away from the show thinking that Agatha sacrificed herself for Billy because she didn't. And the fact that she clarified that, I loved because I was like, please, she did not grow a heart. She is, she'll never, she, like, as much as she appreciates him, she did exactly what she was stipulated to do by death. She had Billy sacrifice himself willingly. She manipulated him into doing it the way she, like, she needed him to. Yeah. Agatha is not noble. No, there's there's nothing good about this person. There's nothing also technically bad about her. Like she's a very I mean, beside her being a murder, like a right. serial killer. Well, well, when I say bad, what I mean by that is like those very flat definitions of good and bad that we often give characters without understanding the nuance of the gray areas between it, because. There's some nuance and gray area, especially now with her as a ghost, presumably going to be helping Billy, right? And yes, the whole point is help Billy find Tommy, but I'm sh- especially if they continue on with the way I think they are, there's going to be Billy's adventures where Billy is a more kind-hearted soul who's going to be trying to help people, right? And Agatha's going to essentially be helping. And Agatha, even though it was kind of like a side effect, she ended up helping some of the witches too. So that's why I'm like, Calling her, f- like, just trying to say she's straight bad or straight good, none of those really truly fit. I, one thing about Agatha that I won't take away from her, and I think is probably where I feel the most connection to her character, is that she's clever and she picks up what's being put down. Like, she learns as she's moving. And I really appreciate that about her when we see her in her fight with Rio, and Rio's like, how about a death of a thousand cuts? And she's throwing different things at her. Agatha remembers Lilia selling mm-hmm. her when she calls you a coward, duck. Mm-hmm. And she that's like a learning from Lilia. Um, when she gets the cut on her Achilles, she does the water spell that she saw Jin do. Mm-hmm. Like she picks up on her, even though she acts like she'll need a coven, if she didn't have a coven, she would not have survived that moment and been prepared to do what she needed to do in order to last until Billy showed up. So 
I appreciate that. Like she shows like she's not. She's not going to she's never going to be the girl who is going to boost you up and like right. tell you, you you got it. Like, you girl, you ate. like she's never going to be she's never going like, to be yeah, supportive. Never. She's never going to be supportive. <laughs> never. Um, but she will give like props where they're due when she's not being salty. When she's not being selfish, because she is a selfish, yeah. self-centered, egotistical Dramatic character herself. It's so funny that she was talking about the maximum wants to be in dramatic. She, my girl, is level 10 drama. Like it was like she, like, I know she like whenever she whatever she was saying, or right before she falls into the freaking leaves, I'm like, and that's exactly what happens. When you're sitting there <laughs> talking out of the side of your Running mouth. Running your mouth real hard, and then Yeah, of course, of course. Um uh, Agatha, listen, they know Agatha is too good of a character to kill. And that's why they have like this out of her being a ghost, right? It's possible, right? But it's just, it's just interesting to see how, what they're going to do. And of course, how that's going to relate to Rio and how that's going to move forward. Um, Rio did get her bodies that she generally, besides Billy, but she got they get the body she wanted. I thought that was very interesting when she made a point to say that she couldn't take, or, or Agatha surmise, that she couldn't take Billy like she would take everybody else, right? Billy really had to give I, himself up. I wrote that down as like, do Agatha and Rio have telepathy with each other? Because she, well, like, no, I thought Re- Agatha's just very smart and could catch. And I know catches. Rio. I know she like she's been doing that throughout the uh, the series. Where she'll sit and be like, you can't like she'll be like surmising things. Yeah. But the way that it flowed, it was a little interesting to me. I well, don't know. Well, was, they also, as I said, they also been fuck buddies for yeah. a century. So like you kind of start knowing people, right? <laughs> if you've been with them that long, <laughs> you kind of start realizing how they operate and uh, you could probably finish each other's sentences and shit like that. Um, yeah, probably. But, you know, I also just think like Agatha clocked it and was just like, and she just put two and two together and just said, ah, Okay. This is what's going on. I, I again, but I thought that was just interesting, like how like that whole rule set about how death works and who death can take and what death can decide. Like even with Nikki, when she was like she came because that was his time, and she didn't stop the death from happening. She just said, "I can prolong it." Yeah, I really appreciated the fact that. Um... Rio said, I'm trying to find my note about what Rio said. Like, so mm. I can get it, like, as, mo- as, like, concise and precise about, like, paraphrasing as I can. But basically, when Rio said that, um, that Billy in, like, taking over that body mm-hmm. had... It was a violation. Violation of a sacred act, like, sacred act or something like that. Mm -hmm. And I was like, now that you say something, I could see why death would be very like interested in what Billy's power set and Billy and what he's doing. And because nobody else be doing that. Besides his mother doing death, dream walking, death walking, whatever the fuck it's called. Nobody's doing that. Hmm. So being in violation, it seems like the Maximus have a tendency to be in violation of some major... Habitual like, line steppers. The Maximoffs are habitual line steppers, i.e. Wanda, Billy, and soon-to-be Tommy. Because he uh, sure did get that drown boy. Uh, uh, let's, let's, let's touch on that real quick because, again, that was also Agatha's doing. Agatha guiding Billy to how he finds another body. Her mentioning there's a new body every, 100, every what, 120 bodies every minute, she said, meaning every, 120 deaths yeah, yeah. every minute. I was like, Jesus, that's a, a hell of a metric. But for that to be like, you know, do you like, oh, you'll find somebody. And then that whole thing with the drowning, like that was morbid. First of all, that was dark. And also I'm just like, what is that even tied to? And then it's a kid that's in a family that, it was part of a group that they they have no family or people who didn't really love the kid or something like yeah. it was for for you to be drowned in that way first of all was absolutely horrendous but 
it's a lot. Um, and also that idea again of how witches die, drowning being one of them. Like that whole tie in, it was it was a lot. Not to say that Tommy's a witch because Yeah, like it's I listen, I it, it was that was a lot for me. And it it, it like I said, it, it was getting it got to a dark place, but you know, I get it. Like they're both are Tommy and Billy. They're both first of all, they're not supposed to be fucking doing this, okay? But they're going to be born out of trauma, right? Like they were born out of nothing, right? They were born out of Wanda's fucking imagination, essentially, and you know, some some red Kool Aid. And now here they are, like popping into bodies that were you know given up. And then also, since this has now happened, is Rio going to be stalking them? Because again, like. You, you've done it twice now. You did it first. Billy did it first, accidentally or otherwise. And now here comes Tommy. Like, like Rio's not going to stand for that because now you're messing with the natural order of things. You're messing with her domain, and she don't she don't rock like that. Like that's not how this works here. Right? And she got Agatha. Agatha yeah, within her realm, not her specific, like not precisely exactly where she might have wanted her to go. Right. But she's within the realm of death, whereas the life. And that's interesting. And let's, I'm not, like, I only know certain things from Marvel lore that has not actually appeared in the MCU. I mostly only know the MCU, and I only Mm. know a couple of things from outside of it. But thinking about Thug, uh, uh, let me put all the words together. Thinking about Thor, Love and Thunder, where... (laughs) We I hate that film, but go ahead. <laughs> the way that Taika Waititi really lost all you lost the plot. That's a whole plot, sidebar. I like you, Taika, but, but we nah. see you. And yeah, I don't appreciate all the goodwill I had from the other Thor, from Ragnarok, going over here. I don't. We're not. No, no. Judy, please. <laughs> Judy, please. <laughs> So back to the back to where I was. So in the I keep saying the uh Thor Love and Thunder, when they're in that like room of like wonders or whatever, mm. um, and we see the living tribunal, mm-hmm. when you keep being in violation of major entities like eternity, death, and we saw um a moment of Valhalla and like we saw our homies in Valhalla. Mm-hmm. We're getting and we're getting death in this series. Mm-hmm. You can't tell me that the habitual line separate line of the Maximoffs will not get us into an interaction with the living tribunal wreaking judgment on all the things that have been going down as they mess with these major entities that no one else has really been effing with like that besides Agatha. And maybe that's partially what we'll see with the journey. I'm not saying we've seen Living Tribunal with Agatha's Mm -hmm. next journey, but maybe we'll see some of the consequences Billy's going to have to look forward to if he's playing around with these big boys, big people. Maybe we'll see them explain that giant celestial in the middle of the fucking Atlantic Ocean <laughs> or Pacific. I don't know. Who knows? I mean, I feel like that's supposed to be... I feel like someone, like, there's a... Someone hinted that we might get that in something coming up. Yeah, we're supposed to get that in something. Um, but I'm just saying, just to your point of, like, now, like, there's a whole... Le- there's levels upon levels of beings that are now being bothered by the things that these mutants and other people are doing. I'm just like, okay, not, like, like, that's what I'm saying. Like, you're talking about an entity. You're not talking about a human. You're not even talking about a person with power. You're not talking about. We're not talking, talking about Thanos. We're talking I think about even alien. over. I think you're even going over gods at this point, right? Like, this is like, because technically Thor is a god. You're going above a god. You're talking about death. You're talking about, as you said, the living tribunal. You're talking about the celestials. You're talking, all this crazy shit that is just like outrageous. And and it, it does speak very well to the fact that Marvel can do this. Like they've done it before. They they fucking made us care about a talking raccoon in a tree. Like y'all can do the outrageous stuff and do it well. And it's just about consistency and and just 
stop the bullshit, really. And also the whole thing about running away from or, or, or trying to do what the the people, the, the fanboys, right, who are always have a problem with Marvel or anybody doing anything different or featuring, you know, LGBTQ or featuring women or featuring that. Like, it's just like, bro, just let it be. You want to get wild, amazing shit like Agatha all along? Like, are you kidding me? That's neither here nor there. I just wanted to mention that. But, um, okay. Um, Jen got her powers back. You were fucking right, Portia. I did want to make mention of that to give you your, your flowers, that you were right, that she did not, in fact, have her powers. She didn't display them. You know, I thought her, again, I thought she was a great bartender, and that's why <laughs> she had her powers. And even, even Agatha was like, well, you got your, you did good potions. Wasn't that enough? No. Not only did Jen get her powers back, she got her back technically from Agatha, who took them from her in the first place. And when I say took them from her, I mean she was responsible for binding Jen. That was another fucked up review. I didn't like, okay. I and didn't like things, that. I didn't, though. No, I didn't like it because, like, when you're talking about, like, like death possibly being the sire of Nikki, mm-hmm. not liking that possibility, mm-hmm. I didn't like the because like how like wrapped up it is i don't like how wrapped up the story becomes that oh all they didn't actually need to go down the witch's road the whole time they didn't need to confront agatha all they had to, all they needed was a moment alone with agatha and then all their issues get cleared up <laughs> and then because um, it was like is agatha and is that the kind of witch that agatha is she's like the Let's talk about like a she's like a meditation witch, like and right. that helps you get well, to the what you need to get to. And I'm like, and the timing of it too was that like Agatha clearly was ready to like give Jin what she wanted. She it was like it wasn't like she was even trying. She was just like, oh yeah. But as that soon was as, like as soon as Jin started talking about her being bind- bounded, she was like, uh, Agatha started making faces like, oh. right, right. And it's like, girl, if you really wanted to keep it a secret, you wouldn't have said nothing. Like, come on. But. That was also at the end of everything. Like, it's not like at the very beginning. First of all, you Agatha told you what her plan was at the very beginning. She was going to kill them hoes. Unalive them ASAP. That was her plan from Jump Street because in her, and that's why, especially with having the concerts of episode nine, we know, like what she said, like her singing the song was just a continuation of what she had been doing for a century, right? It's just been, or whatever, how many years, right? It's, it's uh, the same thing she's been doing in every decade. But this time, the road actually appears and they still, even to your point of like, oh, they had, it was more than just, oh, they had to have a sit down with her. Like Agatha still had to go down that road. They still had to have this, this, this hero's arc slash villain's arc journey to even get to the point where Agatha was going to even tell the truth about everything. So in that way, I don't feel like it was like just them like, oh, you had to do was talk to Agatha. Like, no, you, you had to go through something to get there. What I don't like about that was it was Agatha all along. I don't like that. I don't like, and I, and and maybe it hurts more because I didn't like it either. Jen is black, but and that's I didn't not like that it. not that they're necessarily reading the character in that way. You know, as far she's just Jen Kale, right? They're not saying oh she's this black character. There's nothing inherently up culturally American black that she's done that gives that. But from what it looks like, you know. Typic, phenotypically, it looks like a black woman. So to just see that happen to her and that she's been bound and betrayed by a betrayer, so it's, it shouldn't be a surprise. But it's just like, damn. But here's that's this is my problem with how they, because again, like, oh, do something. I talk to Agatha, and then you find out that you're actually the power. Why did Jen think the man did it? Why, like, why are we just getting? How did Agatha know that the random spell she did? Left her signature on Jen. We didn't get any scene where she like runs into the Jen like previous to this whole series, and she like says something to her, and then she's like, "Oh crap, that's a I have some of my magic that's on her." Do we have to do that scene? I feel like for us to get just a wrap up of like, "Oh, oopsie, it was me. I used to do spells for uh, funds back in the day." It it really feels like a like it's like spells for hire is what she says. She but says it she got feels, coin by doing it. Yeah, but it, it honestly feels like a level of disrespect to of course. the power of Jin. Of course, and like, 
And I understand that being like a, like, even if, again, if that's just part of the storyline of like, that was Agatha's life along the way. Cool. But I, I feel like it's more disrespectful to just make it an aside. Like, oh, how does mm-hmm. she know that she did that to Jen? What is that? in this? So oh, that was what bothered me about it. Well, she, I mean, she knew. My thing is, listen, it's supposed to make us mad, right? Let alone the whole black woman thing. Like just from a characterization perspective, it's supposed to make us mad. It's supposed to be wild disrespectful. You see how Agatha treats people that she don't give a fuck about. They are a speed bump, if that, in her life, right? They are an also ran, an afterthought, third fiddle, NPC, whatever you want to say. What she did to Jen was just a whatever type situation. And, oh, I happen to run into you again. And it is what it is. Um, You see how she treated people like Sharon, like people who she don't see as on her level. She's not going to have a level of care or or really willingness for them. Like it's going to be disrespectful at all costs. And that was very purposeful. And it was just beyond the pale. Like you, you saw how Jen was crying, screaming 100 years, 100, right? Like to be, and to be you, and you were the one. You was there the whole time. It was you all along. I'm fucking walking this road with you trying to, thinking about saving your life sometimes, thinking about helping your ass, talking about helping you. And this is what you did to me. Like the truth came out this way. And Agatha don't got, Agatha don't got the empathy. She's just like, yeah, bitch, I did that. Like it's supposed to make us mad. Yes. Is it fair to that character? No, but anyone who encounters Agatha is subjected to unfair treatment beyond the pale. I think that sets us up for the montage of her killing multiple covens of witches time after time after time after time and how holy just like and (laughs) this would have been one not to not to be that girl but this is one of the moments where i was like do they all gotta be multicultural covens can't you just take (laughs) out (laughs) yes they have to be multicultural covens she likes the flavors of the week man butter what she say butter pecan chocolate deluxe that's Agatha when she goes picking who she going to, you know, suck you by that day. Like, it was incredible. She just went through all of the cuisines of the world and kept it pushing. And that's why I feel like the Salem Seven has got to reappear because she's she will have to answer for her crimes. Well, I don't know. Well, also because what did Rio say? Rio was like, oh, you got all these bodies, including the Sa- the Salem Seven. So I'm like, was that a confirmation that the Salem Seven was, you know, out the paint? But she's a ghost now, and they're also dead. And who says they're not? Ghosts. She's struggling around that. Right. That's Because Because what did they explain when the episode with, with um, Agatha's mom as a ghost, they said, why do ghosts appear? Like if they have unfinished business or unfinished business, and it's like what, mm, it's like a very strong tie to unfinished business. And you did have a whole situation last episode where you said, well, the same seven could be so compelled, you know, by like whatever spell, whatever it is that they are, that they just dead ass just won't stop. That could be a thing. Maybe we'll see that. Um, but yeah, I just. Man, I ah, oh, that's tough how they treated how they treated Jen Jen Kale. Now, for her to be now fully powered up again and flying, and the way she flew, she she did a, a Scarlet Witch. She did a full on Scarlet Witch fly. My good sis flew the fuck up out of there. Like she, I, oh, like I was like, like, and it was like no hesitation. Like when she when she, that that one lone tear, like the I'm free tear, like she was giving storm on that shit. Like she really was. She was giving the if y'all watch X-Men 97, when it's just like, I'm unbound, I'm unchained, I have my powers back, that that realization okay, of coming into your own. I know. That realization of coming into your own and being like, I'm back, bitches. Like, that was some, that was, in some ways it was very scary too because, yes, she, like now she, she's unbound, she, she's back in her glory and she's angry as fuck. She is angry as fuck. And it was Agatha. 
And oh, it was Agatha. The now, mom. what's going to happen? And what's going to happen to the later people? Like, what if she runs back into Billy and she sees that Ag- Ghost Agatha is is tagging along? Like, how's she going to cheat? How's she going to treat or care about Billy or not care about the nigga, right? Like, it's a, it's just another really, like, juicy soap opera part of all of this, right? Like I said, yes, it's fucked up what happened to her and I don't like it. But at the same time, it's just like, well, this makes for great TV because now she has ops. She, I mean, Agatha always has ops, but, like, now we're talking about addition, like, multi Now a coven ops. member has survived. That tell don't happen. Because remember, she, 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 what did she say? She said, well, technically, you saved a lot. Your point, that's the first time that's happened. Most of them get got. So the one, listen, and you were also right when you were like, you had said like early on, you were like, has Agatha actually ever been down the road? The answer is no, because the road didn't fucking exist. It's a, it was something created. From but, building okay, reality. Okay, okay, Shit. okay, 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 okay. She's never been question. on no damn road. The road didn't exist. Here's my question. Here's my here's my closet. I don't want to believe. I am I'm Tinkerbell. I am giving Tinkerbell vibes. I want to believe. I want to clap my hands and believe in Tinkerbell. I don't think that the road is fake. You giving X Files. I want to believe. <laughs> like, no, girl. I don't it think the a- road is fake. I think that every time Agatha was using utilizing it, she had bad intention. She didn't actually plan to use the road. And I think Because she was surprised as fuck when that int- door popped up. Okay. Because intention is behind witchcraft. It's a behind spell magic. So not the road not existing may have happened for Agatha doesn't mean other witches haven't had an opportunity to go on the road and it actually happened. It's just that whenever Agatha has tried to invoke the witch's road, it has not because her intention has never been to actually go down the road. I think that's a cute theory. I'm going to keep that on your side of the debate table. Tinkerbell. On my side of the debate table, this was all Billy's fault, okay? <laughs> he is his mother's child. I don't, I don't, I don't take away from that. I'm Agatha, not saying that that's not true. And, I, and I'm not saying, and just to be clear, I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just mm-hmm. saying it's just a different way of thinking about it. I'm gonna let that stand. The way I'm standing, that is Wanda's pick me down. Wanda manipulates reality. Wanda. Them boys is of her warped reality and were supposed to return back to him when she folded the hex, but did not. That boy cannot, didn't know how the fuck he even got there in the first damn place. Okay. He don't know how he jumped into the next body. It was just there and he's so talented or whatever Agatha lied to him about. He don't know the extent of what he can do and he will not know for some time. He is still in training Them training wheels are firmly still on. He 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 barely he barely got his new fit on. Okay, I refuse. His little grimoire is tiny. It's it's so it's, it's so cute. Uh, he did that. The strength. It's it's the thing about Wanda is even though all that was intentional and stuff, there was still also a piece of there was a there was a mental break that she had as well. Okay, at the end of the, I think we can agree mm-hmm. to some effect that Wanda also went through a mental break. She yeah. went through a reality break and all that stuff and that's why WandaVision became a thing. That boy is his mother's son. It's going is also going through that and has gone through it. Literally went through that when his soul jumped into another body that was leaving and now you playing the role of or, or trying to live a double life. You got the split lifeline, right? So I just think it's just more of the same. It's more of it's more of that power manifesting in strange ways. This show, Agatha, is a child of WandaVision. WandaVision was all about bringing the imagination and, and fiction into reality and then moving through life as if that is reality and warping that reality. Billy is doing and has done the same thing. He moved his whole damn attic into this place 
that wasn't really there. He wanted this place to be so bad, just like Wanda wanted to have kids so bad she willed them into existence. He wanted to reach the road or something he read or her again, just like all them other witches of hundreds of years past, they read about the road and Lorna Wu got the, the, the road is a thing. The road is a thing because it's a fairy tale and you want it to be real so damn bad that you will allow that to permeate your psyche. Couple that with someone who has reality bending powers. You get what we saw, which was this, this show. That's, that's, ain't no way. Ain't but no, ain't no I mean, way. And, and what does Agatha do? She capitalized. Duty. I also feel like <laughs> the fact that Agatha, the whole time we were questioning, like, just Agatha, I love that the reveal of, like, the question has been, has Agatha ever really been here? Like, did she even go here? The reveal being, no, but she's been out. She been hating from outside the club for centuries. <laughs> and so when she says, oh, I've been down the road, she's been down the road of using the idea of the road, the road of being a to liar. kill people. You've been down the road of being cat. Of being a serial killer. Yeah. <sighs> Even on that road. So I just, it was, that was a fun thing for me. And I think, like, to your point about, like, this all being the Maximoff reality. Again, it's going to come. The Living Tribe, like, y'all are going to get seen by the folks. Y'all like, y'all can't. And, I, and, but, and all of this is stemming from the fact, and I know that you have strong words for Wanda Maximoff, but <laughs> all of this is stemming from the fact of Wanda, like, like mother, like child. And Wanda so wanted children from a place that like that was not that was impossible to happen and will them into being that they when they are in this world cannot fathom the reasoning behind while why willing someone into being is a problem because their mama made them so mm -hmm. And I just think... It's a problem when you have the power to actually do it. And I think I... Here, with great power comes great responsibilities. And I, I really empathize with Billy. I like, feel like there's some parts of like, his character that I can really enjoy like seeing like what could grow from that. But I also think that... <laughs> the thing about being a teenager, <laughs> not mm -hmm. for me to be, go into my... Older bag talking to the younger Jim thing. But then <laughs> okay, you see Judy. <laughs> playing a 16-year-old who was actually, yeah. yeah. So the thing about being a teenager is you are aware of how much you have to grow and learn from the world. You know that you're not fully grown. You know that there's so much yeah. to go before you really step into adulthood. And you're willing to take those lessons and learn those things. At the same time, you're not... You're growing up and understanding more and more why the ways of the world as grownups have around you have shown it doesn't gel with how you're understanding how to move around in the world. And so the naivety that he brings to trusting Agatha when he pops again up, and again and again. When he way. pops up in his full Wiccan regalia, was magic she, flowing fabulous. from his fingers. I was my question was. Okay, has this costume been in the car back in the trunk this whole time, <laughs> or did he just like manifest it? He manifested it just himself? like his his mother. But he, he showed up at the door at his parents' crib in his regular regular clothes, so it kind of gives me like you got a kit in the back seat or something. Anyway, not Batman. <laughs> <laughs> but um, for me, like him popping up with uh, the powers glow a glow and all that right when Agatha most needed him and be like being trusting and being like, don't take all of it and trusting her not to take all of it. I was like, this boy, what? you got a death wish. Cause he, he's an idiot, but he's a young, he's young. He's naive. And when I say he's an idiot, I just mean that with love. Like <laughs> it's, I do like he, like even to the end, he's even, he trusts her over and over again. He trusts her at the end when he was like, 
okay. And first of all, this this episode was very funny too, episode nine. He was like, go ahead, you can take me. And the Agatha looks at him and is like, yeah, take him. <laughs> and the look on his face, like, oh, you you sold me out. I'm like, she been doing this. What did you expect? What's not clicking? This is Agatha. And he was like, you was you really? You really gonna sell me out? And then he tried to do the whole, the whole, Agatha, I know you hear me. Agatha, Agatha, I know you hear me. Is this how your son died? Like, it's just so funny to me. Like, in some ways, they're manipulating each other, too. This goes back to what do we say? What are witches? What are witches if not manipulators, right? Sounding like vision, right? What is what is grief if not love endearing? Whatever he said, right? Girl, all that. You know what? I, I know my lines as an actress. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I just... It's just... It's just another toxic relationship. The toxicity of Agatha. And I just, I honestly, I, pre- I appreciate, like, is this not being a person living in the world? Are we not surrounded by toxicity and people who manipulate you? And sure. you have to learn that lesson sooner or later. Is it but on the over scale? And over with again? Tr- with the same person? And that's why, but here's the thing. When you're a teenager, I don't even want to say teenager. There's a grown adult to do this stuff too. When you mm-hmm. are in a certain mindset, you think there's the, I've not been that girl, but I know of the folks who'd be like, I can fix him. Right. Kind yeah. of girls. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and at the, and he also admired Agatha, like regardless yeah. of how she, much he, he may dislike her, he still admires her and looks at her as a mentor um, and un- recognizes her power and wants to learn from her. And it's not like his mom is there to take him under her wing. So no. Nope. And his 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 you know Earth six one six parents or whatever Earth we on right now ain't doing it. So but and also there. for them they were like you're gone twenty four hours where you been? How do you answer that? And then where is he going? Because he left again. So I'm like, is he just gonna like? You know, he's going to live his life normal. Then on the weekends, him and Agatha have these Scooby-Doo adventures. Like, how are they, how is this going to work? Or is he just going to leave home? Because at the end of the day, he's still like 16, 17, right? Yeah. I, so he's not question, even legal. There's so many questions around that, right? Because it's like. <laughs> like, he's on his Ash Ketchum right now. I'm like. There's, you know, whatever there is talking, whenever she was talking about Wanda, I was like, there's no way this lady returns to the MCU. Does not find out about Billy and Tommy, and doesn't wreck his whole home life. Like <laughs> this is not gonna last. <laughs> That's all I said when I'm just like, "Bruh, like, what are you thinking?" But to your point, he's a teenager. It's a complicated and toxic relationship with Agatha. It is what it is. Um, like I said, I did just. There were some, there were funny moments. And that's also why I enjoy this series so much or this season, whatever it was going to be. It's funny, right? Like I was dying when he was leaving after he, he put, he like sealed the door and made it like a, a tomb and with the names for the inscription for like Lily and them. And he was leaving the house and everybody's looking at him. He put on his hood, like his mom's. And then gets in his Subaru and drives away. And I could, could not stop laughing because I was like, bitch, why don't you just fly away? You got to like, get the like, car back home to his parents. What? You got to make <laughs> like, sure they, that story stay in place. You gotta that's, make, the, that's the thing. He can't come like, back home and then be like, where's your car? Because that's, that's, too, that's guess, too far. I that's guess, too far. And, 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 and perhaps that's a great plot hole that they didn't want to have. But I was also just like... Girl, you can fly. Like, what are we doing? Why, why are we doing the product and placement also right he now? Was being respectful to the Westview folks, he was like, maybe they don't want it. They shouldn't see another witch floating around over here before they get a any like, traumatization. Forester. He's like, advertising wanna... one because I remember the name of the car. But my God, I don't want to traumatize these folks any further. I'm gonna uh-huh. just. Girl, you, drive off girl, like a regular day later. Girl, you don't even drive around nothing cute. You just He is a teenager. He's taking whatever car his parents won't give him. It's it's just funny to me. A teenager that that got powers almost damn near limitless and your ass is driving around in a soccer mom car. I appreciate him keeping up the facade. <laughs> I just it was just so funny to me because they again. 
They made that scene so dramatic. And then, oh, oh, I got to get out of here. The paparazzi, oh, oh, let me jump into my scooter. Like, it's just, it just was incongruent with the level of, the level, it was supposed to give this, oh, deep emotion. Oh, deep drama. And we're going to go put put away and, you know, my, my scion, my Prius, whatever it was. So it is what it is. What it was your life be the most dramatic? Hmm? When in your t- lifetime have you been the most dramatic? <laughs> when I was a teenager, I guess. I think, actually, I'm more dramatic now. I mean, look what I got on. I'm way more dramatic now. <laughs> Technically, same. Uh, but, you know, I, I, I'm i sure some adults would be like, mm, I don't know, kid. Teenage you was pretty dramatic. <laughs> no, I just, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I no. I was actually a very it was, quiet it was, child, so I wasn't doing that fuck shit. But I will say, if I was Billy, I would have flew the fuck away and and fucked. I would have. I would have magic my car home. Like, mm, cut, cut. You know what I'm saying? You See know you magic. And, and that goes back to what I'm saying. It's just like now we're picking and choosing. Mm-hmm. Like when he does know magic, when he doesn't know magic, when he does know fair, what to do, when he doesn't. To be know fair what to, to do. Billy. It's not like he's strong in his magic. No, yet. he's not. And I said that he's not. He's, he's not. He's still training. He's still learning. He's still, he had, the, he had the training wheels still on. It's just and I feel like crazy. that's partially why he gave Agatha the magic. He's like, I can't trust myself going against death because I know I'm going to lose that fight real quick. I'm going to just pass some to you. But stupidly, because like <laughs> Agatha's... Oh, anyways. Yeah. You, did you think that Agatha was going to kill him? <laughs> I was like, look. Because <laughs> you thought I, that was the end of that? I, the only thing that I was like, the only reason why she might not kill the boy is because she got this deal with Rio. Other than that, I really yeah. think this is so so stupid. Yeah. I also I also still and like as we're wrapping up, I just I also still don't believe Agatha has to do that to no. survive. I think there's another way. She just does she it because she addiction. likes it and has an addiction. I I think there's another way for her to live. I think she could be fine. She, she she'll figure it out some other way. There's no you. I don't believe that one bit. She's honestly, willingly being this way. I honestly question at what point. Like Billy, this is gonna classic. I feel like this is gonna go a very classic teenager uh way, where Billy has like made friends with this person who doesn't like his mom, and then whenever his mom comes around, he's he like, can be friends with your mom's op, her like top the number one op too. Like that's kind of funny he's, style. He's that's... gonna be friends with his mom's op. And then when his mom comes back around, he's going to be like, what do you, sh- at least she was here for me. You weren't here for me. Blah, blah, blah. And then she's going to be like, word? All right. Well, then let's talk about your friend over here. Oh, man. She, let's talk about how she tracked me down and set up what your father <laughs> was doing for a love and family thing. It's worked into this twisted thing. She was ready to k- kill you. And me in the freaking streets, and you over here making her your mentor, and you love her more than your mother. Oh. Oh. This is very. This is this is very daytime TV. Yeah, it's very young and restless of the MCU, what and is, I, and I fucks with what it. What is what was the um, magic one that was a soap opera? Was it like it was what, passions or something like that? Like they. At some point, they started having magic in there. I didn't watch uh, it, but I heard about it. I was like, "Why want to watch a soap opera?" And then I turned it on. I was like, "Oh no, this ain't doing it." This is- um, I know Ben Amin is going to talk more about this because uh, mm-hmm. he's more well versed. But he did mention that this, this, these last two episodes had big Wiccan and divine implications. So for those who read the read the book, uh, the book series, the Wiccan and the Divine, um, Jamie McKelvey and friends, like I did see a lot of parallels. I don't know if you've read. Read those books, I, but I did see a lot of parallels. Yet. Um, he'll he'll talk. I, I'm gonna let him talk more about it because I want to know precisely because he he felt it was super super strong, and I want to know more about his take on, on what that why that was. Um, but beyond that, like, what did we did you get to touch upon everything you wanted to about the two episodes, um, about the implications of what happens now, um. Like, did we even, did we talk about everybody that needed to be talked about? The only thing that we didn't talk about that, and it's not even a big thing, it's just something that I really appreciated, was that, remember how I mentioned the fact that um, when Agatha was having her delusion and her neighbors were playing into it, when you see the playback 
from Billy's point of view, we don't see Rio and like none of the neighbors really seem to have seen Rio either. So it was only Agatha who saw her. Mm -hmm. How well written that is that Mm -hmm. like in the episode eight, whenever they're having the send off in front of her house and all the neighbors see are the clouds. The clouds. Here, they can hear Des cackle. But they are, and so they're like, is this happening again? So like, they know it's some level of like witchcraft, Mm -hmm. but it is, they don't see death. And I'm like, that's very like on the nose of how death only appears when it's ready for you to see it, when it's your time. And so for the mortals to just not have any idea what was happening. And then for, even for Billy, who is a, a witch and also like has like dealings within the death realm not have originally seen Rio the first time around, but only in like having a, a relationship with Rio of some sort, being able to see her now. I was like, I really appreciated how they played up that entity and the magic and the way that death works within this world. I agree. And I still feel, I still feel so bad for those Westview people, man. Like they cannot catch a break. <laughs> Do they know their neighbors? Dead? Do they uh, know that Miss Sharon Davis is gone? Uh, who knows? Who knows? Stuff just happens to those people. And for them to still be living together because, you know, like, you know, trauma bonding, but stuff just keeps happening. Stuff is just like, you know, I would, you know, I don't even know if I would have left Westview too because, like, when you're that damaged, it's just like, where do you go? Right. And how do you you live around? And who do you live around? Like, what? So then I'm sorry. So that was the last thing, but the actual last thing is to Mm -hmm. the, um, the theory about. The songs at the end, and there being deaths, and then we got Agatha as a ghost, but not dead, and there was no theme music change for that episode where she like she died in episode eight, and then we get to episode nine and she's a ghost. There was no theme song change at the end credits. For there wasn't either on either of them. Nope. And so at the end of episode nine, we did the only end credit change we get is that instead of there being the road represented with the like title card, it's Billy's room. Right. And I appreciated that. Because Billy's so, room is, the road was Billy's room. And more, all the clues that are laid out in the end credits are all around Billy's yeah. wall. So yeah. it's, it's been Billy's room all the yeah. time. So the Billy, time. it's Agatha all along, but Billy's room the whole time. <laughs> that should be the full title of the show, right? <laughs> I love it. Listen, I had a blast with this show. I I really do hope. I mean, it's it's one of the t- more highly rated shows of recent memory, and it's gotten a lot of rave reviews in general. And based on all of the comments we get every week, like y'all are watching this faithfully, right? Demonization be damned. We're all still enjoying that this. Spell and that was it. cast has really got us in its grasp. But okay, like um, oh oh, shout out to Jen for how she unbound herself. I do. Like that, that was very empowering too. Yes. Like when you know, for her, I think she had she to take back of his hair power. and tire. Yeah. Up. So, for, so I didn't even know that. Like I said, it, it was giving. It was giving X Men ninety seven Storm getting her power. You know, getting. Her and when she got back. her powers back, how she it was like a deep in like she could yes. feel it, and I was like, you you could feel her feeling it, and I love when an actor plays out enough of an emotion that you feel it yes. for them too. And Shashir, I was, yeah. Zameta, she did that. She did. she did that. And obviously, the whole cast really went in. A plus all season. Just, just beautiful. Um, but you know, I, I do, I want to see more, and I'm very proud of how this went, and I'm satisfied. So, we appreciate everyone who's been listening, who has been enjoying this. If you've missed an episode or a review, please go back and watch or listen to us. Listen on your favorite podcast platform. We are on everything. Just look for For All Nerds, F-O-R-A-L-L-N-E-R-D-S. You can also catch us on the YouTubes, youtube.com slash For All Nerds TV. Um, you could just li- literally just Google For All Nerds and we'll everything we're on will pop up. That Follow way you can us. See our wonderful Halloween costume. As you can see, uh, again, happy Halloween to folks who celebrate it. And you know, sorry if this is too demonized for you, but you know, hey, we're here. Uh, <laughs> I don't think you'd be listening to us if that was a problem. Um, please follow us on socials. Again, for all nerds with an S. My name is Tatiana King. That's where you can find me on the interwebs. You can find Portia on Twitter. And because I'm a name, keep calling it Twitter because that's what his mama named it. Portia knows. Okay. K K N O W S. 
Um, make sure you are also, um, you can also just, just listen, everything y'all have done, which is like watching us, sharing the shows, okay? Sharing the clips that we put out. Like it's literally two clicks. It's literally a tap of the finger, whatever you need to do. Press the share button. Press the bookmark button. Like even if you never see it ever again, just please just press the button anyway, okay? That matters because that helps gives us more engagement and more reach. That helps increase and expand the fan fan because we keep meeting more and more people every day, especially at New York Comic Con we were just at, who says, I didn't even know you guys existed and y'all are my people. We want to get more of our people together. So please make sure you are sharing, liking, subscribing, doing everything possible to get the word out about who we are and what we do. Um, also, you can support us in a multitude of ways. We have incredible merch. If you watch the latest For All Nerds clip from us at New York, New York Comic Con, I was interviewing cosplayers who did a whole Castlevania situation, and I was wearing the legendary Gucci Mandalorian shirt. You can get that and many others at ForAllNerds.com. It is very fast shipping. It's two to three days. Before you know it, you're going to have your shirt, and you're going to have it for your fit. Uh, make sure you also go to Patreon, patreon.com slash for all nerds. That way you can become a monthly financial fan fam of us. You get first dibs access to things like screenings and giveaways. You get Patreon only shows and, and conversations and all of that. So if you love us, you enjoy us, please, please consider supporting us in those ways. Like I said, even if you ain't trying to drop $1, okay, you can help better than that, but that's all right. Share, press the button. Appreciate you. <laughs> I say this every week because it is that important and because we love the show. We love what we do. I love you, Portia. Thank you so much for being here, for doing this review series with me during this. Thank you for dressing up as Judy Funny, one of my favorite characters. And honestly, you are the best cosplay, best costume, like, in the last. Like, no, you you ate. You ate. You won, you won, you won. So that being said, thank you everybody for listening, enjoying us. We will see you soon. Bye. Hey y'all, thank you for watching this For All Nerds video. Whatever video it was that you just watched, make sure you hit these buttons below. Press all those buttons, that like, that subscribe, whatever you see right below these fingertips right here. Just hit them, hit them, hit them.